Good day, everybody. Ryan here, Quant Labs, April 24th, 2024, 1.48 East Standard Time. Okay, so let's talk about, I'm at this point now that I've got TraderPost.io working with both interactive brokers and uh, Coinbase. And this is fully automated trading seamlessly coming out of TradingView. Auto trading is another way to put it. We'll put out now a new video playlist with Trader Post IO. You can find that on my channel at youtube.slash fontlabs. So look for the video playlist called Traders Post.io. All right, so let's figure this out. So the title is Should You Algo Trade with a Real Crypto Exchange or a Bitcoin ETF only? The reason I bring this up is because with these services for either Coinbase or Interactive Brokers, you're going to spend a bit of money, like $40 for each asset class, be it crypto, uh, obviously for Coinbase. And if you want to do stocks and ETFs, that will leave you with Interactive Brokers. And as I said before, if you're in the US, you'll have other options to access futures and options as well, depending upon the broker that foreigners to the U.S. will not have access to. So as it stands, my choice right now is do I continue to go with Kraken, Coinbase for algo trading as I've done? What I'm finding this year is that right now from the date that this is recorded, Bitcoin is, has, has kind of done well, but it's done not so well because of, excuse me, of the ex extreme volatility of just general crypto and everything revolves around Bitcoin anyways. So it's got me thinking, and I know this is happening out there, when you look at really good exchanges like Kraken, and then you have the ETFs just focusing on Bitcoin soon, Ethereum, and maybe some other alternative coins. What I'm finding is some of the articles that, or like real articles they're putting out there, it's like, is real crypto exchanges needed now since you know we've got an ETF and most people will just want to passively trade an ETF and let's say Bitcoin get the same performance as if they were with a altcoin but to get the extreme returns you also have to take the risk that those same crypto coins the altcoins are going to dip and have drawdowns a lot deeper than what you may not want to allow in your portfolio. It's fine when you're in 20s and 30s, you can afford it. But when you get older, 40s, 50s, 60s, you, your risk tolerance goes down. So you're going to be less tolerant of wanting to trade crypto in the sense with all coins. So as a result, you want to get exposed to something like Bitcoin, then maybe you could just trade an ETF like the BlackRock one or whatnot. And it's so bad for an industry, Grayscale, which we're is now spinning out their GBTC out from the other other trust, I guess they have, and other altcoins because they're getting killed so bad and it's really bringing down the company as well. So Grayscale's independently spinning out their GBTC, their, their Grayscale Bitcoin trust, which has always been their number one trust, I guess, ETP, I think they call them. And that's how bad it is for Grayscale. So... It's just better to have a small portion of your portfolio with crypto in it as you get older, as your risk tolerance goes down. And then there's going to be the other camp saying they want to trade crypto on an exchange, which is fine as well. So we'll kind of go through this with what this came up. And there's the pros and cons of each. And I'll add in my own two cents as well. So obviously, when I'm talking about an ETF like Bitcoin, Usually, let's get real. It's going to be BlackRock that will pretty well dominate the current ones out of nine or 10 of them. I think those smaller ones will fall by the wayside. Maybe Fidelity may survive as an option, as well as the number two. But BlackRock's eaten up a lot of the lunches of not just its own ETFs, but the competition as well. Okay, so this one's the allure of the real crypto exchanges unrestricted access of potential gains. So here, the advantages are direct market participation. So yes, you can trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a bunch of other altcoins. 
So you'll be able to get some of the profit from those ones that generate the profit. But because we're now in a, a volatile period, have been for the last couple of months, you know, is it worth taking that risk? Because you gain the profit. And if you're not watching what you're trading, especially in automated fashion, you will probably give back the profit. Just so you know, I was going to post an article on TradingView on this, but there was an article where it was saying that the US dollar may continue to rise and that that may kill off a lot of the emerging markets because a lot of their those countries are denominated their debt in US dollar. So as that goes up, so does their debt. And there has been a direct indirect relationship between Bitcoin and US dollar. When you look at the performance of the US dollar in 2022, where everything else was tanking, including Bitcoin, the US dollar was up, what, 15%, maybe 20% for that year. But then when you look at the performance of Bitcoin, that was when the Bitcoin winner, or crypto winner was happening. So when the dollar goes up, you can't expect Bitcoin not to perform at all as you would like. And it's been proven now that Bitcoin is not the digital gold that everyone was talking about. It's been proven that Bitcoin cannot predictably be used as a hedge against when the markets go bad or the debt goes up and inflation, all this bad news. Bitcoin generally may not go up. And here's the problem. BlackRock pretty well has 6 to 10% roughly among all of the Bitcoin miners, which a lot of them are American, oddly enough, and it's a cartel. So no bit different than with BlackRock with the ESG, where BlackRock and Vanguard have part ownership in pretty well every major corporation listed on the markets. The same thing has happened with crypto miners. Now, I've always said that crypto miners out of the U.S. for a Bitcoin arm, nothing but a cabal. There is a council, there is an association, and I'm sure there's a cabal that get together and say, we're going to move the price of Bitcoin, we're going to do this and this and this. So now you have BlackRock with an ETF, and you cannot tell me that there is a conflict of interest there now because they have an ETF at the same time where BlackRock has a say in what happens to the miners, right? So now they, that cabal... It has a partial influence of BlackRock that indirectly influences their ETF. So remember that because now BlackRock has the ability, what perceived can be perceived as being able to control the price of Bitcoin pretty well at will. And the altcoins, there might be the odd one that may go against the performance of Bitcoin, not long term, and it will be volatile. And it's very difficult to pick those ones out. So as a result, you're pretty well locked into probably the top five, be it Bitcoin, Solana, Ethereum, maybe XRP, and another one, whatever, a, a stable coin. I don't know. So there is that influence from BlackRock. So you really have to ask yourself on the legitimacy of these crypto exchanges. One thing I will say about crypto exchanges, though, on a positive side, is that they run 24-7. Right now, you cannot trade a Bitcoin ETF 24-7. So if Friday night when the markets are closed, but the crypto exchanges are closed, we've used this example before many times, that night, Friday night, the price of Bitcoin collapses and, and drops 10, 20%. Can you sell your ETF during that time? Right now, probably not. So as a result, on Monday morning, you've got now a 20, 25% drop in Bitcoin. You could have sold it on the exchanges, but with the with the ETF, you're going to get a gap down. Now, we need to sell on the Monday. So that's a very important factor to understand the difference between an exchange and, a, let's say, I call it a Bitcoin ETF. The other thing here is with ETFs, the real ones, there's a granular control and flexibility. So meaning, if you're using... I'll go trading. And now the new technique that I've come up with that has been verified to work with, with TraderPost.io, TradingView, and Coinbase 
you now can get in there and algo trade and have that control, even to manual override your positions on the trading trader post IO. So you can do that to to get out of the markets when they go bad. In case you are automated trading strategy or bot, I don't like that word, but you know it's all the same to me. And then you can get out and override to 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 get out of those positions instead of. Uh, to minimize your losses. Now, another so-called advantage here is potential for higher returns in all the different altcoins. But again, that increases when the volatility kicks in and on the downside. That can I have seen it for the last few months that high-performing altcoins, they draw down a lot steeper than something like an Ethereum or better yet, a Bitcoin. So their losses are a lot more minimal. So that can be an advantage. And and there can be where a week, two weeks, where certain alt- altcoins will perform. And you can benefit from that, that you won't get through a Bitcoin ETF. So understand that. Now, some of the disadvantages with the real crypto exchanges especially if you're going to do automated trading, I've proven you don't have to have the technical expertise if you just stick to the the methodology I've come up with between trader uh, trading view and trader post IO. It, it works seamlessly. I have to, I'm pretty impressed with it. So that will minimize your technical knowledge, but you still from the trading view pine script, the language of trading view, you still have to Come up with your strategies in that language. So you will, you can't escape having the technical expertise unless you choose a open source trusted strategy within trading view. Now, if you're trying to do it with C and Python or whatever language, Java, whatever, it just complicates the problem on the technology front. I'm asking myself as I get older, why am I going that route now? Because to me, programming is a real headache. And why recreate the wheel when what I just mentioned is out there and it works seamlessly and quite well. The other thing is with some of the exchanges, like they they have to adhere to local regulators. So that's a good thing, but still doesn't stop them from allowing you to trade some maybe manipulated altcoin as well. So be aware of that. Um, FTX comes to mind. The security concerns as well can be a legit one with the hacking and the sophisticated level of hacking. When you look at the news yesterday and how El Salvador, their 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 national wallet for all their citizens was hacked, you would think that would be properly locked down to prevent that from happening. But even a government-issued wallet is not secure. So... Don't stop to think that, you know, that your account may not get hacked on a real exchange. I don't know if a, an exchange will have insurance to protect your account. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think so. So be aware of that. One of the other things that you have to be aware of, what I've already mentioned, is the volatility can be very, very extreme out of nowhere, which can hit your drawdowns very steep, 10, 20% in a matter of minutes to hours. So if you're not on top of that, you can take losses and you can easily give back your wild profits that you earned. So there is that. I mean, if you're going to trade with Bitcoin, that may help the losses. Let's face it. We've seen some declines, flash crashes with Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. So there is that. Okay. So let's get into the ETF and why they may be better. Again, it's all about risk, right? So with ETFs, as I said before, when you look at Bitcoin, the uncertainty of Bitcoin, as I said, with the rising potential U.S. dollar, and it has been going up, that may put Bitcoin where it may not move at all for the next while. I don't know. We can never predict that. But with the ETF, they're liquid, specifically, obviously, the BlackRock. I've already mentioned some negatives on BlackRock. These are your choices. You can either... It's like if you know cigarette companies or tobacco companies are making money, but some people might not be comfortable by making those moral decisions. Or same with cannabis 
uh, companies and stocks. So this is the same thing on what your risk tolerance is. But these are the options that you should know about. So when it comes to Bitcoin, if you're on something like Interactive Brokers, it's no different than buying any other ETF or stock. So it's more simple to do that, depending upon your broker if they support it. As far as I know, Interactive Brokers do support all the available ETFs out there for crypto or for Bitcoin. So it's easier. Now, because of that, with the ETFs, the Bitcoin ETFs follow the same regulation as any other ETF. So it's more safe, it's regulated, and nothing's going to happen, especially if it's a BlackRock ETF. I mean, we're dealing with a $10 trillion company of assets under management. So I don't think they're going to go away tomorrow, maybe compared to a much smaller crypto exchange. So with the with the ETFs, you do get a re reduced risk profile, and they're generally lower volatility, as I said, compared to the broader alt market, altcoin market. So depending upon your risk profile, some will want that to exposure, and this may be good enough to go with <clears throat> on the uh, crypto, namely Bitcoin. Now, obviously, there's some disadvantages there. Obviously, if you're just going to stick with the ETFs, your, your options may be, maybe let's say, Bitcoin now, Ethereum tomorrow, maybe an XRP and a Solana. That's all you'll have. So as I said, if there's a general broader performance with other altcoins, they may generally outperform. Back in November, December, Solana went up two, three times compared to Bitcoin. So there is that as a, as a disadvantage. Higher fees. Obviously, you're dealing with ETFs, and then you're going to have the broker fees on top of that as well. With the likes of Kraken, very low commission fee. You don't even see it so low. You may start seeing it with Coinbase. That's who you go with. But if you're still with Binance, despite your views, you wouldn't even see the commission fees one bit. And as well, yeah, when it comes to the Bitcoin ETFs, you have lesser control how it's traded. Because uh, again, it's traded like a stock. Monday to Friday and all those usual trading hours, as I mentioned earlier, that might not feel to you. Dep really, I think it comes down to either risk tolerance or pretty well age, you know, what level you're at and what your age is. So there's going to be some factors that are going to help you decide which to go with. So if you're a risk taker and you're tech savvy, most, and you got the programming, algo trading skills, you may want to go with a real crypto exchange. Yeah, you could do well. I've already talked about it. If you're a beginner, yeah, you're going to have a steep learning curve. I've got courses that'll help you out. Uh, so you might want to view those. And as I said, if you want to make it easier, we got I got now newer concepts that, as I said, it just involves trading view, trader post IO, and your so far the only supported crypto exchange is Coinbase. But as I said before, they will add back in fairly soon. So some people might go, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go with both strategies, trade an ETF and trade a on an exchange. That's fine too. I think I've already mentioned it. Which would you rather go with? It depends on you, what you want to do. If you do the trading traders post IO, dio, you will pay a higher price, probably close to $100 for both options that I'm suggesting here between interactive brokers and Coinbase. So you may be up to $80 to $100 per month. If you're willing to do that, maybe go with both. And just use those as a, if you're a full-time trader, you could definitely write these off as business expenses. So that's the good thing. If you're just a casual trader, that might hinder your options. So again, it all depends upon you and what you're able to do. I can't give any conclusions here what's better, but I will tell you this as of today. If we do go into a crypto Bitcoin winner, I would probably just say, screw it. I'm not going to be on Coinbase. There's going to already be the outflows. that said, Grayscale spun off their Bitcoin trust. This is Bunzel back up against the competition of the likes of BlackRock. So you may be better off in a, in a Bitcoin ETF and just trade that ETF in your interactive broker's account and be okay with it when the conditions allow. That's the route I'm probably going to go over the next few months. Now, if it gets really crazy in terms of profit, I could switch back to the Coinbase or for now or Kraken or whatever. 
So those options are now, but for now, I will tell you, I would rather just stick with interactive brokers. And if the conditions allow it, I will easily add in a ETF, whatever it will be, if it's BlackRock or what my system used to flag, Vito, BITO as an option as well. So that's where it's at. It really comes down to you, what you're comfortable with. Hopefully, I'll help you out. If you want to know more, get your free trading books and the like, go to quantlabs.net slash books. If you want to join our Discord, as I keep saying, the engagement's the key, people to talk. We've got now 230 plus people. It's fast growing. You can be part of that. It's free. And then you can keep on top of what I put out. All right. And that's where I now post most of my activities on the Discord server. So we'll leave it at that. Thanks for listening. Have yourselves a good day and da-da-da-da over and out.